Good morning. So today, continuing our flight in Italy. Now that we're actually in Italy. <laughs> so earlier I'd landed um, in one of these airports out here past Vatican City. I don't remember exactly which one it was. But we're going to come back to the international airport at Rome. And we're going to take off. And then we're going to head down past this island to do, 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 this little airport down here. So this should be a little fun. I believe this is the island of Malta, if I am correct. My geography is failing me at the moment, but I, yep, Malta. See, I knew it was there. Uh, obviously, I'm all with it, so this should be an interesting flight. So that's where we're headed down. I think this will be not too long of a flight, but it should be a little fun. Uh, I've got it set to low altitude airways. We'll see how that goes. As soon as we get in the game, I'm going to switch it over to real-time weather. I've got the time set. It'll probably screw this up, but I've got the time set for roughly when I landed before. Uh, maybe I'm a little far, but that should be all right. And then we'll head on off to have some fun. Um, so I think after this, we're going to head... Uh, west further, probably over here to the Greek Isles, and see what's fun out there, what we can get up to. So, with that said, let's jump in and take a look at the Air International Airport at Rome. All right, so we are here. Thankfully, we're actually at the airport now. Okay, I don't know why you're screwing up my stuff. I, whatever. Um, all right, so we are going to treat this fairly similar to the usual flight. Get the batteries on. External power is on. Okay. Alright, so as I said, we're going to treat this fairly normal. Um, I'm going to zip on over to the runway, we'll take off, discuss my takeoff positive negative, and then have high hopes for the arrival and landing. While they're talking, let me toggle live weather, which is good, kept my time. All right, just getting the weather readout for this airport. We are set and ready to go. So, yep, it just downloaded the weather. See, that's part of the problem because it takes a minute for it to pull down the live weather and all the stats and then flip it over. So you get this one thing that looks great and then a moment later it's terrible. This almost looks like it's kind of wet on the ground or it has rained recently, though it's dried or something. Interesting. All right, let's get my ground services going. Let's get the jetway. All right. So this should be a very pretty departure with all that activity. Let me pull my VFR map over for a second. We're taking off of the north-south runway there. We're basically just heading straight out and down. We're gonna fly over this island and then come down and around and in. Ah, zoomed out way too far. There we go. So I'm hoping this will be a fairly easy approach. We'll descend, make our base turn, and then come up on final. Should be able to catch the localizer a long way out and should make this a fairly straightforward, easy landing. Um, I don't have a lot of concern with this one being difficult or anything like that so biggest thing is just going to be the wind when i get there and the live weather as it changes and updates so really hoping to see some of those changes as we fly baggage is done weather looks a little rough in some spots dark rainy clouds clear in others so we'll see what we get on our way out as we head that way to the south all right, next comms will be from the air.
Okay, so not too bad. I had a couple issues where my plane seemed to be drifting a little odd or turning on its own. I thought it was the wind, but when I got to the runway, the windsock was pointing the other direction. And then once I started my takeoff roll, my plane started auto pushing in the opposite direction. So a little bit odd, but uh, most likely the wind blowing in off the ocean. Pretty decent takeoff. I managed to fly mostly manually on that one, which was good, trying to step up my abilities a little bit. Flew pretty much up and onto the uh, way waypoint path pretty well. Decent rate of climb, managed to keep the speed relatively close to what the uh, AI had said. Now that I'm on auto throttle, though, it's pushed it up to 250 knots, which is a bit fast compared to what the lady had told me. She said, do not go above 220 knots, so I should probably be coming over here to the auto throttle. This one. And uh, setting my own speed, but for the moment, I'm just going to let the computer handle it. I'm not going to fight with that too much. 1131. Cool. So my next frequency should be one two five one two four eight five zero. Oops. They changed how all these controls automatically work, and it's starting to treat me, trip me up. I don't know enough about the flight computer, uh, but that's all right. So otherwise, I think that was a good takeoff. This isn't going to be a super long flight. We should be about fifty minutes, fifty-five minutes at this point before we get there. Um, Again, I set it for low altitude, so we'll probably go up to maybe 20,000, if that. And we'll head over. Looks like a stormy day out to the west, but pretty cool to see the Thunderheads. High cloud layer there. A lot more fun when you actually set the right weather setting when you take off, but uh, yeah, this should be fun. So let's enjoy the flight on our way out to Malta.
All right, so a little bit of explanation here. Uh, I just got handed over to Luca and the whole thing kind of reset, so you might be wondering what happened. Well, I hadn't planned to make this video when I did. I had some extra time um, to fly and I thought I would, but unfortunately I had about 15 minutes too little space on my recording hard drive, so at about this juncture, maybe a little farther along, the video just stopped unfortunately, and I missed my approach and landing. So I've kind of had to reset and try to get back to where I was at the same place. Unfortunately, the weather's different, so I had to try to recreate the weather, which means my approach is different, which means my altitude is different. So this whole thing is really a big cluster and I'm really quite pissed off <laughs> at myself because this was the best approach and landing I have ever done. I did a lot of things within the cockpit. I did a lot of things more timely. It was beautiful turning my, uh, I'm, on, I'm on my downwind now. I turned base, I turned final. I couldn't see the airport. There was a wisp of cloud in front of me. We burst through the cloud. Boom, suddenly the um, transponders, everything kicked on for the, or the localizer kicked on for the approach system. I turned that on, we came in beautifully. I saw where the wind was coming from. I'd used the, uh, on the live weather, well, I can't show it now because I'm not on live weather, but there's a little meter option that gives me the uh, wind and everything at the actual airport. So I kind of knew where the wind was coming from. I knew I had a wind blowing from my left so that when I disengaged autopilot, unlike the last video when I was at Rome, I could counter it a little bit, be ready for it. Everything was beautiful. Um, hearing the system countdown, 100, 70, 60, 50. At 50, I started my flare, came in beautifully. 40, 30, 20, nothing, then five, touchdown, brought the nose down, everything kicked on. I was a little off center, but otherwise everything about it went perfect and it was so great. And then ah, the taxi, the parking, I was so pleased. And then I realized it hadn't recorded. So ah, we are just at about the same juncture as last time when it cut off. At this point, in the, you, you could see kind of where the clouds were in the old video. I could not even see the airport when I was flying up. Like I could see the uh, coastline here, but I could not see the airport or anything. It was all just obscured by cloud cover. So I'm gonna go back into fast forward and try to recreate as much as I can. I'm gonna be fully focused on the approach and landing. So I probably won't talk much until I land for a very brief recap. Um, but anyway, here's hoping I can have another good landing like I did last time.
Okay, so I think overall I managed to recreate my landing almost perfectly. Slight bit of an issue once I landed, just staying straight, but I managed to bring it down smoothly, stably. That was a passable landing. I did exit the wrong taxiway, which I did not do last time, so I've got to make this hard left turn now and get the plane headed back in the right direction to go park, but uh, otherwise that went swimmingly well. Not quite as good as the original one, but uh, there was a lot of things that I had trying to do coming into this. So you could see I checked the wind. Both, I think I mentioned before I came in that I was checking on the, um, uh, the meter thing uh, on the live weather where I could see that the wind was from uh, 7 and I'm landing from the south so again I managed to recreate the same wind patterns almost um, as I had originally when I came in and I popped outside the plane just again I'm still casually playing to see where the wind was blowing from and I could see that it was blowing the plane off to the side which was good so I was able to uh, counter the wind fairly decently. I kind of overcompensated, which I did a little bit last time as well. So I drift a little bit too far to the left. I tried to compensate a bit with the rudder this time, which is why I kind of hit at a bit of an angle versus last time where I was still pointed fairly straight down the runway. But overall, again, that went fairly swell. Um, a passable landing, smooth, touchdown, slats, flaps, everything done. And in the previous video, I mentioned that I'm trying to get a little bit more towards the sim side because I've done a lot in the kind of casual side. And while I still prefer to play casually, you can also have a good amount of fun doing some of the sim experience, such as doing a, a, a good portion of the flight controls inside instead of using the shortcuts on the controllers. So uh, doing my flaps from inside the cockpit, in this airplane at least, and some of the others, it's very doable. You set everything up, you go through your landing checklist. And those are the kind of things that I'm gonna to try to get a little more into. Um, I don't know this airplane perfectly yet, but it is the one I am most comfortable with. I've logged the most flight hours in this airplane. Everything seems to work overall at this point where there's no real issues with, even auto throttle on that one worked pretty much as expected. So the um, airplane was, throttling down, throttling up pretty much as I expected on approach. I turned it off just so that I could do the flaps the way I'm comfortable with, but again, I kept it fairly stable. I kept it on longer than I usually do. We descended beautifully through all the different layers um, without any real issue. We came down with plenty of time. So overall, I'd like to get a little bit more into doing certain things on this. You saw uh, at the end, I used the standby radio system um, to configure it. The only thing I can't do very well on that is I don't have a listing of all of the um, radios that I need to transition between in order to get here. Um, but I could easily get a list of that off of um, online mapping software. I forget the name of it, but I do have some to uh, schedule and uh, log flight plans, which it's a great tool, great map. You can log everything online. Um, and get all the, the radio frequencies and information that you need. The flight computer is one thing here that I really don't know anything about and I would like to, as well as doing the startup start down sequence properly. Um, but again, just easing into more aspects of the controls and what I'm uh, needing to do here to properly control and fly the airplane, which is a lot of fun. 
and gets more closer towards reality. I've thought about doing some of the um, proper real-world uh, ATC mods for it, but the downside to that is simply that um, I don't know all the right uh, commands and, and information to give to them. So it's a little difficult for me to do that properly. Um, and the other part of that is I'm, I'm, again, fairly casual and I may not have time to stick with every facet of it and uh, make sure that I'm at my computer able to listen to everything that the uh, ATC guy tells me. So for now, it's a little easier to stay with the um, computerized person doing it, but I may take over the actual ATC commands myself here before long just because, again, I'm trying to s switch a little more towards the casual side of it, and it's fairly easy in the way they handle this, so... Apologies for the break in flight. I had to recreate it. You can see I flew the last 41 minutes of this flight again, and thankfully we managed to create pretty much the same landing that we had last time, so thankfully two thumbs up that's still my best landing um, and you got to see a portion of it so we'll continue this journey as we head to another nice location and enjoy getting a little more into the simming side of things a little more realistic so thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you next time